Hello. So I'm Saris. Uh, some of you may know me in the Cosmeteer community, and I wanted to do a video about crew pathing, which is a subdivision of ship construction, which not many people, I don't really see very much of it on YouTube. And crew pathing is part of building the ships, but rather than putting the actual like armor down or weapon systems, you tell the crew how to operate. So you might tell a crew he can only go do energy things. So today, or on this video or whatever, I wanted to recrew the terror as well as fix other crew related logistics issues. It's not the greatest ship um, design wise, as some of you may have noticed. And if you were to auto fire everything on the ship and try and get it to actually have the crew properly supply it, you'll notice that it doesn't have very well, it doesn't have very good upkeep. And this is just with the missiles, how it's decent, but a lot of them don't have enough missiles or as many missiles as they could be. And that's just with the missiles firing. If we get all the flak to be auto firing, as well as the tractor beams, which is probably what it would be doing in a real battle. I can't get the tractor beams to fire. In a real battle, all of these systems would be firing and suddenly you're starting to notice that even more things are running out of power. So if you activate thrusters too, it'll start even having more problems because the crew has not been set up in a way that helps make it function at all times. So I'll turn off the thrusters. And you see here, part of the issue that comes with not crewing your ship properly is especially on an interconnected ship, is that the crew will be anywhere on the ship. And what you always want to do is have the crew, like, not be walking around super far away. They want to always be consistently going the same routes. Because that's more efficient that way. You want to have them spending the least amount of time walking around. So this guy had to go all the way down here just to get to there. Where this guy could have just went here in the first place since he's right next to it but instead they went all the way up here and they're now helping with missiles and there's examples of this all over the ship and it makes the ship much much worse because all of the crew are walking instead of working and that is one of the issues with a lot of new players and new ships is that they can't get the crew to function because they they don't ever touch this tab which is sometimes if not more often more important than the build tab Okay, let's let's get this guy back up over here. Let's turn the weapons off. And I feel like that does a pretty good description, or that's a pretty good preface of what the crew tab is and how it's important. So, now I'm going to show a small example of the differences it can provide. So this left half of this ship, if you can call it a ship, has the generic red shirts, the things that the crew role that every crew starts with is completely vanilla and unchanged. And this one is different, and I edited it, edited it to function better. And as you notice, there's three different roles here. There's blue arrows, which means crew are specifically assigned to tasks. And the storage and reactors are specifically assigned to give energy to specific things. No, none of that is present on the left half. So if you auto-fire this point defense, then you'll notice that there's different things going on. Such as this, these crew. Um, hmm. Well, I guess it isn't a big difference because it's such a small ship. But the differences, as you noticed on the tear, become exponentially worse. Because there's so much space for the crew to be walking around. If that terror was auto-firing for even longer, then crew would have been on different wings of the ship, based on where their quarters were. Okay, that's not important. Ignore that. Okay, so, I wanted to redo the terror so that it functions better. And fortunately, because it's not asymmetric, I can just delete half of the ship to make things easier for me. And because... If you were to properly build the ship, then the crew would not 
be spending their time on the other half of the ship. That's not something you ever want to have happen in a proper ship design. They want to always be next to their quarters. At least as often as possible. Because it is very unhelpful when they don't. They perform significantly worse. I feel like I'm restating everything I just said. So now we have half of a tear. And I am going to load a specific set of rolls that I set up a long time ago. And I will explain each one. So basic roll, they can do anything. They have everything set to one. So they have no biases, except maybe like setting out fires or controlling or the control rooms since you die without them. Not sure why thrusters are high, but that's unimportant. So the suppliers are set to supply things. Supply battery, supply ammo, supply batteries to ammo factories, but they will never operate. They are not operators. They are purely suppliers. These are the guys that walk around. Operators are the people that will be operating. They do nothing but command these lasers or thrusters or engine rooms or whatever. They will do nothing but operate. Ammo suppliers are interesting because I needed a specific job. So they supply bullets and ammo to specific things. Because I don't want them to be taking care of energy or operating. I just want them to give ammo to these things. Because if you just assign a crew to a missile factory, they can supply batteries to it or they can carry the missiles away. And I want these people to just carry the missiles from the factory to launchers. So that's what ammo suppliers are about. Energy storage suppliers are probably the simplest role besides basic role because they do everything and they just supply energy storages because if you assign crew to an energy storage that means they will supply the energy storage as well as take energy from the storage to things that the storage is supplying and we don't want that because if there's crew next to a storage like right here on the tear then I want the energy storage people to come, deliver the battery, and then these people take care of the shields and this and whatnot. And the final role is the energy distributors, which they take energy from the storages and distribute it. So the energy suppliers would come up here, give this energy, and then these guys would distribute it to the shields and point defense. Okay, so... Now we're finally ready to start maybe doing something to the ship. And you notice that all of the things that are manned by crew are offline. That's because all of these crew are automatically set to supplier, which is incapable of operating. And we don't, and we'll be fixing that eventually. But currently, I actually want to fix a lot of the doors because some of you may not be aware, but door placement is very important because if you put the door here instead of there, then the crew have to walk all the way down here, which is an extra tile, which makes the crew less efficient, which is problematic. And if you were to put the door here and then there and then do that, then suddenly they have to walk two tiles to get here, where before, if you just put a door there, then they only have to walk one. So it can change a lot of things. So... I'm just going to manually delete all the doors on the ship, because I want to, and redo it manually, as well as reset all the walkways. Because walkways are very interesting in how you want to set them up. There's a lot of discourse or different differing opinions on how they should be set up. I have a specific way which I'm going to share that some people may disagree with, some people may like. That's what I do. I'm pretty good at the game, I'm okay, but there's better players that tell me I do it wrong, or do it worse than I could, but whatever, that's not important. This is, I'm just going to do it how I want to do it, because I'm doing the video, and that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so, something about the tear is that it is an older ship. There was a recent, relatively recent change where you can deliver energy to thrusters, from engine rooms. So these doors are completely unnecessary. You only need to access the engine room. The only case I can imagine where you have a f where you want a door to these specific thrusters is if there's a fire because a cannon shot or something got in here and then the fire is spreading. I don't 
but that only happens if this explodes, because without doors, fire can't spread between these two units until one of them is destroyed and explodes. So technically, removing doors helps fires until the part is destroyed. So it's a bit of a trade-off at times. Click every single one of these doors, just to make sure it's all fine. I'm going to delete this stuff just to be thorough, because it looks pretty. And because it's faster than manually clicking doors. Because if a crew path, if the door leads into the great vastness of space, then it will not be a door anymore currently in the game. So it's easier to just remove walkways a lot of the time. A thing, by the way, that I've noticed about the tear is that it has a bunch of rear shields. Um, if you're a new player, you may ask what's wrong with that. But the reason is you don't want rear shields is because if an enemy gets behind you anyways, you're mostly toast. And the tear is a lot larger than the standard competitive scene. Like this is roughly four times larger than the most than the largest competitive ship. So it's a lot easier to turn on smaller sizes. So you don't ever want to be using rear shields because they demand a lot of energy. And it's a lot of energy that actually just won't be helping you in battle because if an enemy gets behind you, you're dead anyways. So armor, for example, is already a much better option for putting behind yourself like instead of these thrusters i'd probably do something like this where it's just armor because it can actually hold longer for shields it just doesn't regenerate it doesn't take energy and it can just sit there and be helpful whereas shields they have to have energy they have to have crew they have to have supply paths they take up space that could have been used for more thrusters like right here, if I were building this, I would have moved this up and then put the thruster here that connects to the engine room. But I might rebuild the chair later, but not today. I'm currently just making it function more crew pathy like. Because that's what I wanted to do. Okay, so the chair also has probably too many launchers. Like this launcher, this is this launcher is unnecessary. This missile factory is only going to be supplying the right two right next to it, and it takes a long time, relatively, for missiles from here to get all the way over here. When they could just do this two tile distance, that instantly reloads this. Like this, they have to traverse four tiles for one missile, where you can get like two for this in the same time. So it's, I don't know, this isn't really math, but roughly twice as efficient. But not technically. I don't know. I just make modules. I don't understand them. Okay, so we're almost done with this. Removing the doors, that is. And having a blank copy to work with. And I think that's it. So now I'm going to refill in all the walkways using the fill command. It's very, very convenient. Um... Let's block this off, that off, that off. That way the fill command will actually start working because otherwise it would just fill this entire space. So that's why you need to block it off. So for the walkways, you always want the crew to be getting to their destination faster, as fast as possible. So there's, as previously mentioned, discourse about the best way to do it. So I'm just going to do it the way I like to do it. Or the way I noticed usually works the best, at least for me. Because that's how I like doing it. And I'm just going to do it the way I want to do it. Okay, so this may look a bit weird. Like, why don't I just do this? Why don't I just do this? Instead, I'm doing this with no extra door. And the reason is... It takes more time for crew to go in here, move here, and then move here, 
thing it does for them to go in here, move out, and then they just go here. So this way, you also save on doors, which are surprisingly expensive, like one corridor is equal to one door. So this way, you can just instantly go in here and then get out and start going back to the reactor to fulfill your next task, task as a crew person. And I... Fire extinguishers are weird. I don't really usually know where to put them, because you want them closer to crew, but also near explosive things. But I guess I just won't change them at all since the Terror has them in weird places and I'd have to redesign a lot of it to fix the weird placement. So, now I'm going here. I'm doing the weird thing again. And actually... That's fine. <laughs> so there's um, interesting things I'm doing right here so so here a crew would come and depending on whether or not they want to go to the right or down they would change positions here so now if i do this it slows them down going down but if i do this it slows them down going that way and some players just do this anyways like this so that they can get to this place faster or this, so that they can go here and get up faster. But I like leaving them neutral. Personally. Other players do it differently. And this way, they can always get to where they're going a little bit faster, which is always important. Okay, and you are, and you really generally want to prioritize fulfilling the storages, filling the storages. Because that's where most of the energy is going to be going to and coming from. Reactors fulfill, fill storages and then storages fill everything else. That's, that's generally how you want to build ships. Like if this reactor has to like manually go all the way up here. Rather than a storage being placed somewhere. Then it's a longer journey than just having a storage here. And then that just takes two tiles of walking. It's much faster, much easier. There's different ways to do even my own setup. Like right here, it's all one tile, so you can't really um, do moving walkways. Or you can, it's just it can be detractive to the ship because now they're much slower going the other way. Because it does make crew like 50% slower when they go the quote unquote wrong way. But I'm just going to remove that spot so that the crew are forced to go the right way. And now I'm setting up the doors for each crew so that it is as close to the reactor as possible so that they spend the least amount of time walking to and fro, the to and from the reactor. Because we do not want to be spending a lot of time walking because walking is inefficient, as previously mentioned. This is another junction where they can go different ways. I need to fix that because if they go up, then they need to go straight up and not run into a different thing that pushes them that way as they're trying to go up. It's not optimal. And that is a bad thing to be. You want to be as optimal as possible, even in the rather unoptimal ship. Like this point defense, that's it's bad. The shield is bad. We... I would not be placing those as an expert or advanced player at, at all. I would never put a shield or point defense here because there's so much time that's spent just getting the, to these two. And point defense is a very power hungry um, block, at least right now. It's very inefficient to place it far away. It's, it's pretty inefficient in general, but more so when it's so far away. Much less effective. And I'm not really, I don't really have a pattern for where I'm going. I'm just random, somewhat randomly selecting the parts I want to put in and when I want to put them in. So, so I want to just set this up there. This crew would not really ever want to go 
Because if they go all the way over here, then there's no reason to do to do so than to get to the storage. In fact, I can move this closer because that extra tile is a tile that is wasted. So now they can just come up there. And it is much faster. So for this part, I'm going to be leaving these spaces open so that the crew can get to them faster, which is very important. And I can't put walkways in these one by one gaps in these one one width gaps because it's it just isn't good. It just doesn't get the job done. Okay, so now it gets rather weird because I can do this to make these resupply faster, but it gets this location slowed down as well as this one. But if I do this, it gets these locations slowed down. And so ultimately it comes down to prioritizing like how important each thing is. Like is this storage more important than these storages? And probably given that that's the only one of the few command centers on the actual ship. But these block these shields help protect these reactors which are very explosive. So it ultimately comes down to personal choice. You can always just um, go blank and save on money, but there's there's different different philosophies about how to set set it up. It's very interesting trying to discern what the proper way to do it is. If if there is a proper way to do it, I don't I don't like that thruster placement. It's it's not great, not great thruster placement. So, it's cool. When you set up um, storages, you always want to have crew close to them, like in this case, so that they can instantly go and take storage, storage energy and put it into things. Like if you have crew in the middle of nowhere, like right here, he's not going to be a good guy to go and fill a storage because he's going to be the guy that fills the storage, not unloads it like this one. Because he's so far away. So if this guy was set to unload this storage. Then he'd have to walk all the way around here. When you could just use this guy right here. To go up and instantly unload it. So you want to always try and put your crew as close to things as possible. Well most of the time. Sometimes you don't because they explode. Or you want better crew pathways. In the process. But different, different design philosophies, different ideas. Generally, it's better to have crew closer, especially to reactors, because reactors are just energy locations that you want to get away from, that you want to get to as quickly as possible, and then leave as quickly as possible, since you're not helping if you're just standing in a reactor. Okay, so these guys, these three are going to be the unloaders of these three. And this, and then these three are going to be actually really far away from these three because they have to go all the way around, as previously mentioned. So there's idea. There's an idea of leaving a door here so that if a fire starts in this thing, and this is destroyed or something similar, you can come all the way up here and instead extinguish it there. But that leaves the possibility that crew take um, missiles from this or this and bring it to this or this. Which is a long journey compared to just resupplying instantly. As well, the door is rather expensive. So there's sometimes different ideas of whether or not you should put a door there. It might save on fires, it might not. Etc. Okay, so now we're already doing significantly better crew wise because they are going to be a lot more effective in resupplying things. So right here I'm setting up a crew door this right here because I want this guy to very quickly get to here which is more important than getting away from it since he'll just be going down here and resupplying the shield in this engine, um, engine room. While these two will be probably trying to collect energy from the reactors. So I want them to just instantly go up. So I'm placing the doorways up facing and I'm not fix well and not fixing this part since they're just going up anyways. And now this way 
can very quickly get up there. So now, yeah. Okay, so these um, tractor beam arrangements, these crew are probably going to be dedicated to refilling, refueling these from the storage and the reactor. So these guys aren't even going to like have an option to go outside. These these reactors are dedicated to the tractor beams and they shouldn't really be edited. But this big reactor is a lot more efficient than these guys. So I'm going to give it the option to refill these storages since it'll do it much, much faster than these small guys. And the storage will also serve to help supply these. So this way, this can contribute to these without these getting in the way. In fact, right here, this one will be very helpful, will be almost dedicated, it looks like, to supplying this tractor beam. And this crew guy will be the resupplier of it. Let's put doors down. Right here, if you wanted to, you could do this. Because it just goes to the same place anyways. But it looks nice to not change it. And, but there's, but you can change it. And save on costs. Because, well, in other cases, the tear cost doesn't really matter. Because it's the tear. And just half the ship is already over the competitive standard. But with other ships, you might want to save on costs by actually just removing that. No. Removing that. And then... Placing that facing down because now you've saved a door and a walkway, which is 250, which could be another armor piece. Like it could be this much armor, which can make a difference. Like it could protect your reactor where it might have blown up. But I digress. So now this these two crew, these two will be dedicated to this storage. These two will be dedicated to that storage. And these guys will help resupply these storages. That's what these guys are doing. So that's why these doors are closer to that. And I think that's most of this part of the ship done. So now we get into the part where the crew are just seemingly haphazardly placed. Like right here. Very haphazard. They're just kind of there. They're not close to a reactor except this one. But it's a small reactor and... Everyone hates small reactors because they're awful. So, these guys will probably be the operators. And operators are the people that do nothing but sit in engine rooms and weapons and operate them. And make sure that they're running effectively. Because if you have people changing places between being operators and firing between operators and the people who resupply, then there's a lot of wasted time where the weapon is also offline because nobody's operating in it. And that is not optimal. And we don't like it when it's not optimal. It's very bad. It makes the ship worse. Okay, so we don't need to place any doors next to these engine rooms as long as the engine room has energy because the engine room instantly, probably magically, teleports energy to the thrusters. It's very effective. You should always... Almost always be use, taking advantage of that. Because it is very helpful. So these shields don't have storages. So they're going to be less consistent. Because storages help you deal with energy problems. So like let's say there's a guy attacking and it hits this shield. So now to resupply the shield... Some guy has to get a battery from here or here and go all the way up there and then deliver it to the shield. But if you have a storage, then it can instantly resupply. And then in the meantime, while this runs out, energy can be delivered. If this storage is gone, then this shield has much less effectiveness because it takes so much longer to resupply. And by that time, it's probably already gone and too late. So storages are very good. It's weird because these are side mounted and I don't think anyone would really be targeting there. And with bigger reactors, it isn't as important since they are very effective in resupplying shields. But storages are usually better, especially when they're far away. They're almost mandatory when they're far away. Otherwise, they, they just don't ever resupply. Like it's dead before it can resupply, which is not good for the ship. You want shields to be taking damage. Um, 
taking energy damage, so the shield isn't actually destroyed, it's just regenerating. That's that's the bonus of shields, is that they regenerate, rather than just permanently being gone, like with armor. Which you don't want, you want shields to be re-energized, reused, reusable, all the good stuff. That guy's gonna go up there, that guy's gonna go up there. I don't like this crew placement, I'm gonna probably get made I'm probably going to make him an operator, since he's so far from everything. These guys too, these two. They're going to be operators. Like, he has, like, crew. These crew rooms are really slow. They slow the crew down. Crew speed, 50%. They're 50% slower, so they have to walk four tiles through this, where it would only take two tiles of this. Um... That's not correct, but I have to relate the points across. It's it's slow and bad to walk through these. So operators, once they get to their destination, they never they never leave. So it doesn't matter how far away they are from everything. Like if there's a operator here, all they have to do is walk to the ship to their location, like these missile launchers, and then they never walk back. So they can be placed however far away. In fact, sometimes you can use them the crew bunks as shields is um, part of your armor because th it just doesn't matter. They're never in that room anymore. That's my take on it, at least. As always, there's different opinions and whatnot on how to set it up. But that's generally what the consensus is, is that you want operators to not take up space next to a reactor where dedicated deliverers could be. Because there's limited space about around a reactor where you can put armor, which is very important because reactors are ex explode and your ship dies without reactors. So there's limited space. You want armor and crew because the closer crew are, the less time they spend traveling to and fro. So you want operators, the people that don't like do anything in their bunks, to be far away from the reactors or further away. You want that space for the dedicated crewmen. Sensors, weird, weird positioning. Dedicated storage for command control rooms is okay. I wouldn't recommend it. The Terror is not a perfectly built ship. Just, just to be clear, it's not the best ship ever designed. It's just the biggest one. Which is why I selected it to be messed with today. Okay, so we're almost, we're getting closer to being done with doors. Not quite, but closer. And we can actually get to the juicy crew setting up stuff. Okay, so that, so these two are pretty close to the reactor, so I want them to be going up and getting energy. So I'm going to place the doors there. Or sit, or dealing with a sensor array. Which is also important. If possible, you generally want to have crew, um... If they're touching a reactor, you generally want to have them directly accessing the reactor, because if they go out here, then they have to go here, then here, which just is the same as going to the reactor. So it's not as good to not go to the reactor if you have the option to just go to the reactor. <laughs> setting up more doors. And I'm setting these... I'm setting up the pathway holes for these shields, because shields require a lot of attention, and they will be visited possibly more often than these missile rooms, especially with how energy hungry they always are. So they will be set up as such, where they can have access to the crew. Okay, so... So I know I said to always put it touching the reactor, but I've decided that these two will be moving missiles from this room to these launchers. And this guy, these two, this guy, just this guy, will be delivering energy to here. Rather than him delivering energy, because you need a lot of people to control the missiles properly. Or supply the missiles properly. Okay, so, I don't think that these launchers should ever really be a thing. 
because they're just so hard to supply. Like, you can fit more crew here, operators, for example. You can fit more armor. Because the launchers, they don't do anything. They just, they help with the initial attack because they launch three extra missiles. But then they're not doing anything. They're just wasting crew when it could be made more efficient. So I am going to add armor and crew because this way we can have more operators that are also closer to the missiles, which can instantly help. And armor is almost always helpful, especially on slow ships because it's already slow and it doesn't matter. So you can just really pile on the armor and it just, it just helps. Armor is good. Praise armor. It's consistent, it's heavy, trustable, dependable, it's good. Armor is good stuff. We want, we always want more armor. Unless, of course, it makes you too slow, in which case armor is really, 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 really bad. Because speed is often more important than armor. But that's, that's a whole another topic that I don't want to get into. Because this is about crew, and crew is good. I hope it's recording. I've been talking a lot, and it would be quite a shame if it just stopped recording. Okay, so these flak, the the ammo placement is really bad for these flaks because you see here, this ammo. Let's put let's put that there and then that there. As you can see here, it requires energy from that reactor, so they have to walk through. I wish the display would get out of the way. So, the green lines show that they need energy from the reactor through two shields. Two shields, that's a lot of shield to walk through. And then, this needs you to walk through another shield just to get to it. So this is a very bad position for this. Additionally, you generally need more than just one ammo factory to effectively supply a flak cannon. So this is, these are just awful placements. This one's better, but not by much. I would, if I was building this, like myself, I would fix that very quickly. Additionally, ammo factories also explode, and the closest fire extinguisher is there and there. So that's a really long way away, so by the time this explodes, it's probably also killed this. So I am going to add a fire extinguisher there. And I would add a fire extinguisher there, except there's a shield there for some awful reason. So I'm not even going to touch it. These guys will go there, and that will go there. And the Terror is, let's be honest, not a, not a great, greatly designed ship, and it's not super effective, it's just big. So fixing it, as, or making it better as I'm doing, is not... It's a super easy task. It's it's not it's not really ever gonna be effective compared to something that's manually built by someone that more so knows what they're doing. Unfortunately, like this ship was is, is it just isn't good. It just isn't good. But we can make it more efficient. Like this version will very likely beat the other version once it's done. Because the crew is so much more efficient. It's very important to have efficient crew. It can't be stressed enough. Like, just ignoring the crew tab, as well as door placement, like effective door placement, will just make your ship so much worse. You gotta have the door placement. It's so important. And, and crew. Like, it can be really long. Like, I've spent a long time talking about this and actually placing doors, and I haven't even got to the relatively hard part, which is min-maxing the crew. And it can take a long time to set up, which is why I'm sure a lot of people ignore it. They just, like, never touch it. But it can be, your ship can be a lot more effective if you dedicate the time to set it up properly. Okay, so these shields are very, very interesting shields. Those three will be supplied by the top reactor. As well as those, there's too many shields on this ship, like shields, you just want to have like the brunt of them where it matters, and then that's it, because it's just a massive waste of energy to do anything else, but have them where they need to be. But unfortunately, this ship has them everywhere. 
which makes the ship worse. But what can you do about it? You can make a video about how to fix it. That's what I'm doing anyways. Okay, so this is just left neutral because it's... If I put this there, then it makes the crew actively worse when they go to supply this. Which is why I didn't... I didn't change it. That can go there. Go there. This crew is going to be going straight to the reactor, so we don't ever need to be worrying about him not getting to the place he needs to go because he's stuck walking away from this. He just goes straight to the reactor. He won't ever be walking down. But even if he is walking down to go back, he'll just be leaving. So it doesn't matter if you slow him down. As far as I'm aware. You can just slow him down. Pretty sure. Some people might yell at me for slowing him down. I don't... I'm pretty sure that's what you want, want to do. Okay, so... Let's check, make sure everyone is connected. Like this guy, he isn't connected. We want him to be connected. I'm going to do that because he's an operator anyways. That guy's an operator too. That guy's definitely an operator. He's not going to be helpful anywhere else. Okay, so and then this guy is probably going to be an operator too. This guy can get there fast enough to be helpful. This is connected. Um, since this is just an empty space, I'm going to put a fire extinguisher just because it looks nice. And you can... It's better to have more extinguishers than less. Like, between too many and none, it's better to have too many. In my opinion. Because otherwise, one fire started here will kill your entire ship if you don't have any fire extinguishers. They're very important. And often left out, which is amusing to watch, but it will very quickly just completely kill your ship. You don't want to have non-fire extinguisher chips. Very important. Well, a lot of things are important. Fire extinguishers are pretty important. Are pretty, pretty important. Just putting out fires, mitigating fires... I'm pretty sure I pronounced that correctly. Turning off fires before they get out of control is usually a good thing to do. Because otherwise you just die. And dying is not efficient. And if being efficient is what matters. Okay, so. I think. That's the entire ship. It has been properly. Set up. And I'm just going to set all these guys to basic all real quick so that the operate so that they can operate things. This is just a temporary thing. Okay, so see. So obviously not much has changed. Let's let's get a let's get the old example. The vanilla one. The gross one. The one that we just spent a very long time fixing. And let's let's put them here. Let's, let's just, let's put them there. Okay, so. Okay, so then. It's not obvious at first, but there's a lot of differences. Like, let's see. There's two doors here. That's unnecessary. You only need one. There's two doors here. That's not necessary. A lot of these things just, just aren't necessary. There's a lot of stuff that is very impractical and ineffective. Like two doors here. Like this is one of the main differences is how I set up these versus how it sets up these. And obviously we can look at this for longer and see the differences. But this left half is better. And it's going to be significantly better once it has the proper crew pathing that we spent so long talking about. Now we can just remove that. And then we copy this and paste it. Okay, now... Okay, so there's an interesting thing on symmetric ships. Where you have important bits. Important bits. 
such as these two. You can put two doors just for aesthetic reasons, just because it looks nice. You can remove a door and then just have this guy be made like that so that they still just go there. Um, this one's cheaper, but makes it asymmetric, and this one's more expensive, but arguably looks nicer. I don't know, I'll just leave it like that, but there's different ways to do that as well. Recenter the ship, because I like recentering ships. Okay, so, this costs, look at that, look at that, 50k. That's partially just because I removed the missile launchers, like 44. Forces 52, that's a lot of missile launchers I took out. But, even if I add more missile launchers, just to show the example, it's still lots of money saved. That's still a large portion of money saved. Let's see how much. Structure is basically cheap, basically free, and scales this large. Huh. Well, I did add crew too, so if I were to remove crew and armor. See, there we go. Now, you can do a surprising amount of things with 14k in credits. It's actually more than 14k, it's 14k plus, it's 23k credits-ish. Roughly. Roughly 23,000 credits more on this ship, because I saved on so much doors and walkways. And granted that I just, like, I used the money to buy more crew, but this is cheaper while also being more effective. Which is really what you want in a ship. You always want to be more efficient than you previously were. So let's just remove all this. It's, it's established that it's cheaper. Now we can just work on the ship. Okay. <sighs> Time to get cracked like it. Okay, so. So, 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 so. We need operators. Operators, operators, operators. Very important. So, uh, operators, operators, they, they operate things. This, this was previously mentioned. Now let's set up mirror mode because we want to be mirroring things. Okay. So, 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 so. These guys are operators because they're so far away from being helpful. Like the closest is that storage and they need to walk through five tiles of engine room to get it. And that's just to do something. Especially when this guy's right there. So these guys are operators. They're they're not anywhere near helpful. Anywhere near anything helpful. So they're operators. This guy, operator. He's disconnected from everything. These guys, these guys, these guys, they're all operators. They're so far away. These guys, these guys, these guys, these guys. And I think that should be enough, but if it's not, that's what all this crew is for. That's what this crew is for. So far away. And then you might even not even, you might not even want to set up these walkways because if you like these three are operators, they'll never be coming back. Un unless problems. But if there's problems, then you're already, you know, having problems. It, it no longer matters. Okay, so let's set up everyone else to be suppliers just just as a initial setup okay so these guys supplier 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 well they're currently basic all but you get what I mean these guys like, see, you can already see, like, the problems that come from not crew pathing. Like, this is nonsense. That's why you have dedicated operators. So that this, you don't want lines like this. These are very bad lines. Very bad lines. We don't, we want our crew to be in tight knit, never really leaving their area. So now all these guys are suppliers. So they all go home. And then the operators, 
come and take the shifts. Okay, so. So now, so now there's no basic roles left, and we can begin to start diversifying, or specifying. We can get more specific with what each person's doing. Okay, so this guy, engine rooms require two each, so one quarter can supply six engine rooms, operator-wise. So that's what these guys are going to do. And then... Okay, your suppliers. These colors are too closely similar. So let's set operators to be a red color. There we go. Now we now we can see operators from far away. And now we know that these guys are operators and they're not helping. Well, they're mostly not helping. Okay, so tractor beams requires four people each. So two quarters can supply three tractor beams. Unless I have really basic math done badly, but I don't think I do. See, these are completely empty, and then they're all busy sticking to these. So they're being very helpful. Very helpful. Much more helpful than they were being. Okay, so. So these are all satisfied. So now, these guys... Let's see, these three covers, so this, and this, and this, and this. Um, it starts getting very weird, very quickly. So what I like to do with these control rooms is I set up one bunk, and I set it to basic. Which means that one person will operate, and one person will be gathering energy. And they're very helpful that way. Very helpful, deliciously helpful. So I want these guys to only operate on the things that are nearby because they're more helpful that way. This guy will go to those three. That goes to those three. The thing with operators is that I could have all of them assigned to all operating roles on the ship. It looks weird, but it works. And it helps deal with if a part is destroyed. Because let's say I have this guy right here. If this guy is assigned to only these three. And this gets destroyed. Then two of the crew here will be doing nothing. So it is a reasonable thing. To set all the operators on the ship to all operating roles. Let's, like, let's see. Okay, so. Okay, let's clear that. And this looks weird and hard to see through. Because it is weird and it is hard to see through. But, if you zoom in, you can have seizure warnings. Um, I guess I'm not going to do that. But it is an effective strategy. It works. It's somewhat dirty. It's quick and dirty. Definitely quick and dirty. But it works. And that is usually what matters. These two crew are weird. I'm just going to set them to basic roles. That's like way more crew than you need, but... But he's fancy, and I don't feel like making it weird. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so this one isn't assigned anything, and this one isn't assigned anything. So these guys will spend four here and two here. Which comes to a total of six. Which is a very good thing to come to. Because quarters come in six crew members. And these guys will operate the flak cannons. Because flak cannons are three each. So one quarter can properly supply two flak cannons. Okay. So these guys will be assigned two missiles. They will operate the nukes. Very helpful, they, they will be. These guys will operate these engine rooms as well as the last remaining missiles since the rest are taken care of. Um, a 
Okay, so now we're beginning to get a little bit weird because suddenly they're assigned to things that, very, that are very far away from them. But that's not, that's not an issue. That's not an issue because operators, they'll, once they get to their location, it doesn't matter. So you can just assign them from anywhere on the ship to anywhere on the ship. It just doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want with them. They're the, probably the most flexible role since they can just, you know, do whatever. Okay, so here's where it begins to get a little bit complicated. Okay, so these guys are assigned to these three. These guys are assigned to these three. Actually, let's assign those to those. Assign those to those so that this guy can fit in here. No, he can fit in there. Yes. So now the way this is set up is so that each bunk, each quarter has six crew assigned perfectly to each assignment. So this way, this way you have as many operating crew as you need without ever needing more than you need. So this guy is going to operate the flak cannons. And this guy, this guy. So now, by clicking on them, I can see that all of these have been assigned people to work on them. And as you can see, there's much less blue arrows this way, and there's less walking time, though it doesn't matter if there's extra walking time most of the time. Okay, so it seems I actually have a little bit more operators than was necessary, so I'll probably be changing these two. But, otherwise. So then there's an interesting thing where this guy has too many crew rolls, so he will be set to these. No, these. So now he has one extra crew that's doing nothing. And these guys will be suppliers. Just so that we can vacate the area. Then... Um, ah, I noticed what the problem was. This one didn't have doors. It's very... Always have doors. You need doors. Doors are good. They're expensive, but they're, they're usually good. So now, as you can see, there's two, four, five. So there's an extra crew here. So, I'm going to edit the roll. So that this guy, in rare cases, can supply the battery if he has nothing else to do. Like, he would rather operate anything else. Um, not sure why those are set to supply battery. That shouldn't be that way. But now, he can supply battery to that. In rare cases. In fact, I'm going to set it up so that supplying the battery is more important than operating. Because if you don't have batteries or operators in these, then your ship just, um, you lose control of it. It sets it up to offline. And it's not good. So now, this guy periodically will come all the way around and supply that guy with battery. Which isn't as efficient as, like, setting this guy. But it's something for the spare crew to do. So now. Now, now, now. We can see that almost everyone has specific roles where they're helpful. Scroll. Yes. So, anyways... So now, there's just a few extra dudes that are not currently doing much. Which means we have too many operators, which means we can cut down. So, I want to set you guys to be suppliers. Yay! And move the doorway since they are suppliers now. Yes. That's where I want it. I'll probably be changing that door later, but whatever. So now there are too many crew, too many operators. Because as you can see, all of the dots are crew members that are just standing there operating, which is exactly what we want the operators to be doing. And we finally, finally come to the conclusion, and we have... 
So now the problem is we have four extra crew. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to downgrade this. And move armor there. Because the thing is, he, this, this group, is only working on this one. So it doesn't matter. I can just put him here and it works. Okay, so already the ship is even more efficient. Because now the dedicated, the dedicated crew members will only be supplying when they would need to. Actually, these guys are closer. So I'm going to set them to there. I'm going to move that there, just so they can be more in line with the ship. I'm going to set these guys here. I'm going to set these guys to suppliers and cancel their crew roles. That way, so the operators are still far away, and we can have more suppliers. It's very nice, you see. So now this guy will be assigned that. Ooh, a very important thing to do. Very, very important. Assigning the reactor's roles. Because you see, if I assign this guy to do this, he will only supply this. Suddenly this reactor will not help anything at all unless it's the tractor beam. So it's very important to either not have anything or very precisely, precisely calibrate it. The next thing is that rather than supplying these like shields, you supply the storage and you supply the storage to, to supply the shields. Otherwise you have crew that get to the reactor and then walk through the storage to the shield. We don't want that. We want crew to supply the storage and then different crew come to the storage and supply the shields. That's, that's more effective. So we want this guy since he is a large reactor. He's, he's the largest reactor. He's a big boy. We want them to be supplying a lot of things. All the things, if if you will. In fact, well, let me fix this. See, doors, doors are never done. You always have to add more doors, probably. Or rearrange doors. Like, even now, there's probably a lot of ways I could make this even more effective. That I... Um, I'm not currently doing, because I am not the most skilled player. I'm just a skilled player. Okay, so, now we assign our storages to power-specific things. And if you, if you set all of your thing, if you set all of your energy sources to specific things, but then you leave them out, they just won't ever be resupplied. Like, if I cut that out and assign everything else on the ship to specific things, then, then these will never get resupplied. Or, if I don't specifically assign, like, this storage here, but I assign all of the rest, then the only, the only allowable way for these to get energy is from this storage. So you have to be very precise and thorough. Otherwise, you start having the line problem again. Where you see crew walking all over the place. Like now, because of how I've set it up, it's already looking a lot better. There's a lot less crossing lines on the ship. I see there's there's more lines now on this ship, which makes it not as good. So, so we want to very specifically set this up to be as accurate as possible. These go here, and then these small reactors are dedicated to the tractor beams, so they will be set up as such. They won't, they will only supply the storage. Okay, so, and then these are a bit weird. Um, let me do that. No, 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 stop it. You can also assign nuke and missile factors. So I want this guy to only supply these two. Because if I don't set that up, then you will get crew that walk all the way down here and then up here. And then supply this one with, with missiles from this one. Which, obviously, long trip, not good. We don't want it, so we're not going to do it. 
these two, these two go to this flax, because otherwise this will go all the way over here, which is also not good. We don't want that. So, okay, so there's interesting things where you can have overlap between energy sources, like this, where generally bigger reactors will just do it better unless this one's significantly closer. Like this is closer, but this one adds a lot more energy. So I'm going to leave this guy to that because he's just more helpful that way. And then this guy can be dedicated for these things. Important thing to do is that although you can set up the storages to, you set up storages so the crew deliver power to the storages and then other crew take power from the storages. With control rooms, it can be helpful to just directly assign it in case the storage is destroyed or other reasons. So it's just a precaution it reduces efficiency a bit if you like do something like that but it does increase reliability because now there's six different seven different sources where this guy can get energy instead of the previous one where it was just this so it's reliability reliability consistency consistency all good things all important things all good to keep and have everything you want in the ship. Now I'm setting the missiles up so that they don't go haywire, trying to supply things that are super far away. And now here's probably where the hardest part gets because all of these shields are energy hungry and missiles are missile factories are also crew intensive. They require a lot of crew to properly supply these missiles because there's a lot of components in this. There's like 12 right there there's 12 missiles right there so just to like resupply three missiles you need more than a quarter like per launcher i'm not a hundred percent on the math or the specific numbers but you need a lot of crew right, now i'm just setting up specifics weird specifics interesting whatever is double triple checking to make sure that everything's fine Right there, I missed that. Those those would have had problems. These wouldn't have ever been resupplied. Not that they'll ever be helpful when they are resupplied, given their location. But they will at least be resupplied. Alright, so. This guy will be assigned to all this. As well as these. And this, and this, and this. Because everything else is just too far away. It's just too far away to help. And this, this guy, will be a sign of these shields and that missile launcher. So four, and then this guy will be set to these. Okay, a proper way to make sure everything has energy is if you've set up your reactors, you can always just click on your reactors and see what's actually missing. Because obviously, these four are missing. Also, it can help determine how you want to set it up. Because you want to equally balance these reactors, I think. So for this guy, I'm going to remove those two and give them to this guy. Now, it should be a little bit more balanced. I could manually count them. But that's boring. This is already probably going to be a boring video. Some things you can do is leave these reactors unassigned or assign them to more things so that in the event that these shields are destroyed, the crew can then help these. Or if this reactor is destroyed, this can go and help these. I don't usually account for that, given that I'm not... It takes, like, a lot more time to set it up as dedicatedly as that. So I just don't. It's 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 pretty simple. If it's, it's, it's a lot of extra time. It's harder more boring and this is already like an intensive task that most of the player base and cosmetier doesn't pay attention to or care about and it's just another step it's it's annoying so i wash my hands of it i won't be doing it
now what I'm seeing, yeah, here's a problem. I didn't assign anyone to go to those. So now, now the crew will go to these, and then they can get energy. Very important, very helpful. <clears throat> Start making my mouth hurt. Um, these guys want to go there so that they aren't wasting time going back and forth. It's very bad, very wrong. Heretical, if you will. Okay, so all the launchers are accounted for. All the energy is accounted for. Pretty sure, mostly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. We're good. Except... That guy. What is that guy doing? Oh. Well, I'm gonna add a door there just to see if I can make that stop. That's because I added the caution to supply that role. So what I'm gonna do now is make it so that operating this is higher than supplying a battery. Just a little bit. So that way, if given a choice, he'll this group will continue to supply these rather than take a crew from here and then go and deliver a battery. Because it's much more important to have these than deliver a battery if, like, you're in a fight. Because this, like, running out of one battery for a minute is okay. Because there's, there's, there's five on the ship. Uh, yeah, there's five on the ship. If one runs out for, like, a second... It's going to be fine. And it'll just resupply anyways. A thing you can do is test by blowing up, like, self-destructing reactors. And seeing how much of it takes left. And then accounting for that in crew. But that's another super tedious thing that I don't feel like doing. But you can. It will make your ship better. It's just less efficient in terms of how much work you put into how much reward you get back. And yeah, we're going to want to be efficient in our crew because we have lives that we need to take care of. We can't all just spend all day doing nothing but cause material crew pathing. This takes significantly longer because it's such a large ship and I rebuilt the logistics like from the ground up. So don't like be scared with the idea that this takes this long every time for every ship, no matter how small or large. This is just a odd example, because it's so large. Now we've reached the point where I am going to dedicate the storage energy distributors. I don't want, like, this guy, I don't want him to come around and be supplying this, because this guy is so much closer. It only takes three tiles to get to where he's going. This guy takes more, but there's pathways. This guy takes two. These guys take two. This guy takes a little bit more. But that's not an issue because it's storages are consistent. They're they're very cool. So now these energy distributors will be making sure these shields are properly supplied as long as the storages are full. These guys will be supplying these. So, do these, I don't remember, do these guys supply energy storages? Yes, they do. So, these guys will be given energy distributed because it's more spe specific than supplier. It's more helpful and it keeps them from straying from their tasks. Very bad. We don't want them straying. And then this one was running out of energy, which means that there was, there was no orders to fill this with energy, which very bad. We don't want that. These guys are going to be energy distributors. And we won't be assigning them to this because we want them to just take energy to it. We don't want them to supply energy to it. Which is something I messed up here with. This way, they should... If I did it correctly, I probably didn't, but conceptually, they should be just taking energy from these and delivering to the shields. 
Let's see, let's see. We can click on these and see if the crew are taking batteries from reactors. They are not, which means they are doing a good job. Because before they had to walk all the way down here, which isn't what we want. We want them to be efficient, walking as little as possible between these two, just properly supplying the shields. Very important. Okay, this guy is an interesting case. We'll get to him later. Not that. There we go. Now this guy will supply these shields. And I think I'm going to do this. So that this guy can supply energies, energy to those two. And because this guy is so close, he can just go here. In fact, I'm going to do this. Just so this faster, it helps that fire extinguisher too. So now here, this can go here. And then these two go there. And then this guy. Ammo supplier. He supplies the ammo. The ammo is fed by him from these to that. So now I can actually test this by auto-firing it. And we can see a little bit of the crew in motion. And... See, now all these crew are dedicated to firing this gun. That's what they're doing. And I haven't set this up properly. Because these guys were not assigned to this. So now, energy will be received from this. That way, we don't have crew like from here going down there and then going up there. We just want energy to come from that. Which there are more efficient ways to set it up than going down and then around. We want to minimize walking, so you'd probably cut a path through here. But the thing is, ammo factories explode. So we can't really remove the armor without making this part worse. And more susceptible to explosions. So we're just going to leave that as that is. And it's going to work. It's going to work. Okay, so. Now, this guy will be an energy distributor. These will be assigned to these. And because I'm a little wary on how long it takes to get to these, actually, no, I'm not. This, this is actually... Okay, so, I want more crew dedicated to this task, so I'm going to repurpose that one. This guy will also be an energy distributor, and they will share the same orders, just so that these never run out. Alright, so this guy, energy distributor, same story. We want him to be doing that. That's good stuff. That's what he does. This guy goes here, and here, and here, and here. There we go. So now... So, in this part of the ship, all that remains is getting this, these specific crew people, all this stuff, all the, um, dark blue, whatever you want to call it. We need to properly set this up so that there's less walking around that's unnecessary. We want to specifically assign these guys to what this reactor has been ordered to do. And the way we do that, the way I do it, is the closer they are to the reactor, the further away their assignment is. So let's take this guy. And then this. So these are the furthest away assigned. So this guy will be assigned to refilling them and them alone. And I guess this, since it's on the way. So now, these storages are specifically accounted for. So what's the next furthest thing? Probably these storages. And energy storages can be quite energy consumptive based on what their output or what they feed into. And these shields very energy hungry. So these two, these two, will be assigned to these three each. That way, they shouldn't run out. They shouldn't run dry. And this guy, I'm going to... He's not helping this, which is what I originally thought he would be, so he's going to go there and up, so that he can help this sooner. Okay, so these two are the next closest, and they will be assigned to these, because these are also important, which is why they have another two quarters rather than just one. 
Okay, so um these two are decently far away from the reactor. So I will assign them. Energy storage supply. Yes. So this guy will go here since it's further away than this one. And this one is farther away from this reactor. So it'll go here. This is how I like to do it. There, You could just assign this guy to the closest thing. Which would probably be that. So that this is more efficient. But it makes these guys less efficient. And that's not what we want. That's not, what, that's not how I build it. Other people build it differently. There's different ways to do it. This is just my take on it. Uh, feel free to yell at me about how I'm doing it wrong. If you know how to do it better, etc. I'm just doing this as a intro into crew. The ideas of crew. And how to make them better. Um, just by make, changing the ship around. Okay, so. This guy... I moved him from there to there, and that's because he will be getting energy very quickly. He wants he wants to get to these reactors as quickly as possible. So if he's here, that's another few tiles. Like that's the seven extra tiles you'd have to walk beside instead of just being having him be put there. So I'm moving him there. It's more effective. Okay. I need to go back into the crew tab. Okay, so, 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 so. Okay, these two, I'm going to... Maybe just this guy. Maybe just, maybe just this guy. Okay, this guy. Energy distributor. I'm going to set him to supply that. I want him to contribute to the tractor beam. Because the tractor beam is fancy. And then this guy... I'm going to set to those two. He's not an energy distributor. He's an energy storage supplier since he's just going to those two. I don't want him to help with these. I just want him to help with these. So I'm only assigning him to those. And that way, the tractor beams shouldn't ever run dry. Shouldn't They shouldn't have problems. Okay, so this guy. Let's do this guy. And then these can go there. And because this guy is mostly in energy storage... But also, I'm assigning him to that. I need to change it. Because currently, he won't supply that. Or they, or whatever. The people in this corridor won't supply that one. So I need to change that to that. So now, he will supply that. And I don't have to like make a new role. I just have to edit this one a little bit. Which can possibly cause problems here. Because now we might go from there to there. Which is a risk. It could be fixed by more rolls or better rolls or whatever, but I'm not gonna because I don't wanna. Okay, energy distributor. This guy will go from this reactor to these, as well as that. He'll supply that. And then this guy will supply the ammo to this flak battery. It will be running smoothly. It better be running smoothly, anyways. Um, that guy's there. Energy distributor. Okay, so these guys will probably be doing something about this. Okay, so because these two aren't important and this guy's far away, I will be setting him up to do this. From this. Because they aren't important, it doesn't matter. Like, if these were important, I'd set this guy to do it. But they just aren't. They don't really, like, matter compared to shields or weapons. So he can be far away. More travel time doesn't matter when there's such low energy consumption between these two things. It's, it's nice. But the energy storage has to be edited again. Because now I said it's a supply batteries to sensor arrays. So now he does that. And then there's these three crew. And then this is the energy distributor. And PD, point defense, is very, very intensive. So this guy, rather than the obvious thing to set him to these two shields, he will be there since he is the closest crew. And proximity matters much more in this aspect than having the most efficient. Because point defense isn't efficient and it requires a lot of attention to properly set up. So I need to set up that way, not the other way. And then this guy... 
will set up to supply these two energy storages. Oh, um, I think that's the right way. No, I want, I want those, and then these two. These two, there we go. We're looking fancy now. Much better, much better. All the better, all the betterness. Okay, so, time to get to the in interesting, I say interesting, but it's really the not fun part of setting these up. Because you see, it's very, very intensive. You have to set up batteries to go to these guys, which is probably what these two are going to be dedicated for. This guy's closer, so he's going to go there. This guy's, no, this guy's further, so he's going to go to the closer one. This guy's closer, so he's going to go to the further one. There we go. But that's just energy. We need to have... Um, what's the word? We need to have guys take care of the nuke. The nuke parts. Nuke. Very important nuke parts. Also, I didn't have these assigned. And no energy was coming towards these. So I was able to fix that because I noticed it. Okay, so. So, 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 so. I'm probably not going to do anything with this crew, these three crews. Um, and that's, that, that's just an end result. Yeah, I could change them to operators, then take these guys out. But that requires resetting the entire operating system. So the more efficient thing to do, faster, whatever, is just do that. It removes crew from the ship, but they weren't really going to be doing anything anyways. Plus now it, it looks nice and, and structured. Good. Okay, so. Better call. Alright, so they have energy. So now I need it set up. So there's five each. And I have a lot of excess crew here. So I'm just going to assign all of these dudes. All of them. All of the dudes. In fact, this guy is going to be also assigned to them. And since these are far away and don't matter as much, I'm going to set this up. Where he does it instead. And then these guys will be ammo suppliers. And it's weird. Normally I'd have them a lot closer. Like this is a pretty long and gnarly journey. Like they have to go from here to here to here to here to here. And then here, and then up from there, and then all the way over there, and then from there. In fact, I'm probably going to do this, because the journey is so very long. I'm going to do that, because now we can go up and left now. That guy can. I don't know how can coherent I'm being. I'm trying to be helpful, I'm trying to be good, I'm trying to be, um, professional. So, I'm pretty sure that this will get the job done. Once these start firing, um, they, they don't really ever stop firing. They don't ever stop, like, requiring crew to man them. So let's just auto-fire them for a while and see how, what happens. So, you can see they're walking around. Some of them are getting energy. That's probably not, no, they aren't getting energy. That's just overlapping crew. So, it seems that I don't have enough energy crew. These guys are supplying nukes. That's not what I want. They are supposed to just do energy. So let's go to nukes. So this is what the problem is, is that they are supplying nukes. So let's just do that. There, they can no longer supply the nukes. They shall be dedicated energy crew now. Now, it should be going better. What I probably should do is tap these storages for energy instead, since they aren't they aren't getting the job done. There's too much lag between a running out of energy, which means that I would need a storage. Um, these probably need more energy given how quickly they go through it and how little their supply is and how these crew can't make it consistent. So, ah. Uh, mm. I will tap these crews. And then this guy can go there, and then this guy can go there. And I will do this. 
and it does take two fire extinguishers out and that's not what you want in your nukes because nukes explode that's the point of nukes but they explode when you target these factories so i will replace those armor slots which frankly i don't even know why they were there with nuke fire solvers okay so now these shields are probably not going to be getting enough love because as you can see all of these crews are busy with this so actually i will drop those shield charges from these two entirely since the nukes are more important and then these guys will be setting up to deal with the shields as well so i switched the roles now these are running a little bit better it's still not like good enough and to fix it i would need to probably f yeah i'll just do that let's let's do this and okay oh actually actually i've got i've got plans okay so now i'm just going to move the fire extinguisher there because fire extinguishers are good very good we, we need them we want them okay now there we go there there we go there we go okay so this and that will be set to this and that now much better much better now they can get properly resupplied much faster because the crew have so much better access to it. In fact, I'm even going to move this door so that that guy can go faster. Now there's a better loop. Fortunately, now these need to be set up to do this. And this guy will be assigned to that shield, that guy assigned to that shield. And then that goes there. These probably need to be buffed, but that's not, that's not super important right now. So we did take out a shield, but it does give the nukes better uptime, which is arguably more important, since the terror is all about initially just killing the enemy before they can fire back. And nukes are part of that, so having more nukes is more, is more helpful than more shields, since it's just about killing the enemy as quickly as possible. So, if you've noticed, these guys are lounging around, especially when these aren't getting built fast enough. They're lounging around in the quarters. So, I'm not sure how to fix that, so I'm just going to assign them to do that. So, that way they should be um, doing this more often, contributing to that. But the thing is, the limit, the limiting factor is these nuke factors, not the crew. So they're, they're already doing the best they can offer. So I'm just going to remove that. And the thing is that I probably have too much crew assigned to these. Like, if I just save four here, then the four from these will go and help more. So this guy, let's just cancel him. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't need help. And these guys should be more helpful. Now there's less crew lounging around, as far as I can tell. Part of this ship design and crew aspect is maximizing the, as using as least amount of crew as possible. Like, I'm just using this much crew because the Terror has this much crew, but it could be made way, made way more efficient with less crew and more and way cheaper, so that it's even the ship itself is more efficient cost to effectiveness wise. It's very important to try and minimize crew. Crew is very expensive. It's like 1,000 per person. And these quarters, let's see how much. 500, that's a lot. That's worth five doors. So you want to minimize crew as much as possible while maximizing efficiency of each crew. Like this, this is a problem. We don't want those two lounging around. They should be helping with the nukes. Or these three, but whatever. The walkways help deal with that. I'm not sure what these guys are going to do. I'm probably just going to leave them blank as they are so that they can help with anything on the ship where it needs to be helped with. 
because otherwise it's probably just going to be assigning extra crew to where they don't need to be, which is not good. We don't want that. I'm not 100% on how you should assign fire extinguishers. Some people assign crew to fire extinguishers like that. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that they just automatically... Any crew can automatically put out fires, at least if you have this specific thing. If you have this on anything but this zero or cross out mark, then they'll just put out fires. I would recommend a higher priority than most of the other tasks because, as previously mentioned, putting out fires is important. Because your ship just dies. It, it just dies otherwise. We don't want fires. Fires are bad. Bad fires. Okay. Okie dokie. So, I'm going to set up a very specific set of crew. Specific set to be shield care. On this, on these wings, because shield care is important. No, I take that back. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this, because the thing is, that was on button. I meant to do that. So the thing is, these missiles require energy. They require lots of energy. These shields, they require energy. These missile loaders launchers they require lots of crew actively putting missiles in them so i'm not sure what the best application of these crew is there's different ways you could set it up there's different worse better etc ways you could set it up which makes this problematic admittedly but it's still worth it to set this stuff up so these guys will be ammo people to set those up these guys will all be energy distributors, assigned to the very fancy role of providing energy to these and the shields up top. And since this is also providing energy, these guys will be assigned to these shields and these missile sets. This guy... Let's let's repurpose it. Let's let's do the fast button. And these two will be missiles. Missiles are very important. Missiles are arguably arguably more important than the shields. So the closer ones will be set to the shields, and the further ones will be set to the shields. Like such. So now that's all properly accounted for, properly set up. Not sure what I'm going to do with that guy. Actually. Let's just do that. And that. And that. This is why you have to always do crew priorities and pathing or whatever, because they will get on the other side of the ship and be nonsensical. They are very silly. And then that guy can be helpful by taking care of that. It is kind of far away, but it doesn't really consume energy. It consumes like a battery a minute. Maybe worse, maybe better. Uh, I set those to the wrong things. No. There. No, I don't want that. I get there. There we go. There we go. Come on. There you go. Now we're good. Now we're good. Operators set up. That guy set up. Okay. Okie dokie, okie dokie, okie dokie. So these guys are all the odd ones out. So I'm just going to set them to energy distributor. So they help shields, and then these, and then I'm going to assign them to the reactor in the hopes that they just go to what the reactor has been assigned to. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So these two will just do all the tasks that this reactor has been assigned. This 
and this, and this, and this. All the shields and missile batteries, these guys will supply energy to. And same for this, but with the different, you know, set. And that leaves, um, a lot of people. That leaves a lot of people to take care of missiles. One, two, three, four, and two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's enough for two, and two, and two, and two. That's eight, ten, twelve. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's, that's not a fun ratio. It's a ratio, but it's not a fun one. I'm going to set these guys up as ammo suppliers because they are supplying ammo. Okay. These guys will be assigned. Let's just do it a ratio of one to one. Currently, thus far. So as you can see, I have these three spare crew, and I'm not especially sure how to have them help in a way that helps all of them equally. So. I could just add more crew quarters. I could also split these guys into bunks. Which wouldn't be efficient. Bunks aren't efficient. Um, cost-wise, let's see why. So this guy offers four crew for the same price as this guy for six. So bunks aren't efficient. You wouldn't really want them on larger ships like this. Like, even this, like these, um, control room bunks. I would rather just have, like, a single quarter, like, somewhere right here, that's set to operate on all of them. And then just have energy set up energy distributors to supply the control centers. I'm just setting it up this way because the bunks are already there. And I didn't want to change much about the tear with it if I didn't have to. Because it is, after all, about the crew logistics, not the ship design itself. Because obviously, with things like this, we're not too worried about the ship design working. It's already, it's already not great. Etc. So. So each of these guys is assigned to one missile bank. And that's where the problem is. Is that there's three extra. Three extra. That's not good. We don't want three extra. So if I made some of these guys over here operators. I could gain one to three quarters. I could gain three quarters. Which might be enough. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yes, it would be enough. So that is what I'm gonna do with these. These guys are gonna be left on blank. But these guys. These guys are going to do something else. They will be they will be relieved of their duties because I'm just gonna set this up this way where each member can do everything. Because it's um it, it just works, it's faster. I could set it up where the furthest away goes to the closest. But given how these all have basically the same spawn point or leaving point they all have the same travel distance, roughly. So now we have more crew to work with. In terms of supplying the missiles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay.
Okay, so I was counting, and there's nine missile blanks, and I currently have 15 crew. So for two each, I need these gentlemen to also be changed to missile people. So I'm actually going to add these three gentlemen in and make them operators. And the nice thing is that since they are operators, I can set them as far away as I want. And because I'm setting them in the middle like this, they need to be... I need twice as many, since like three crew is going there and three crew is going there. So now, these gentlemen are operators. They will be operating. And I'm going to turn this back into the thing it was before that is um, yes a quarter I'm going to turn it back into a quarter I'm going to set these guys to ammo suppliers and then these operators will be assigned to operate on those and I could divvy it up properly equally whatever but i don't wanna i just like having this v of glorious crew pathing so now i have two each of the ammo suppliers which is what i wanted it's gonna be weird and janky to set it up properly but it's gonna it's 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 gonna be amazing it's gonna work so i need to change the doors around just a little bit just to make it work properly divvy it up Those go there. And these go there. These go there. And you can actually do kind of the same thing you do with operators with these missiles. Because they're so intensive with how many crew are necessary to man them, you can actually mostly put them pretty far away, like with the nukes. And they just supply them anyways, because they're so far away. Because they're so, they require so much attention from the crew that they never even have time to go back. If properly set up. If you don't set it up, then they spend a lot of time walking back and forth. Which obviously isn't optimal. We don't, we wouldn't want that. But, I'm going to be banking on the fact, or idea, that it does work anyways. And then those go there. So now, there's two each. As you can see here. One, two, 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 one, two. Yes. It works. So that, I'm pretty sure, is all the crew properly set up. In a way, I would do it for the tear. So now, obviously, they have different stuff. This one has more people on it, so that it has um, more dedicated crew to doing stuff. I suppose... Um, one, two, three, four. Okay. And then these guys can be operators. I think I set that up wrong. Okay, let's let's clear that for now. So I missed something. I missed something rather important. I didn't set any crew to give that thing energy. So I'm gonna do that. Now it has energy. Now it's good. Okay, so Um. 
Okay, so I'm trying to figure out how the best way to set this screw up is. Um. So. Ah. Another problem. It can, it can take a while before you properly set things up such that everything is properly supplied and fancy and working. So I'm going to set these guys on an extra mission. They don't have to help deal with this. They can help deal with those. And now these guys will take advantage of that. There we go. Everyone's happy. Everyone's happy. They're cool. So now I'm trying to figure out why there's four extra dudes in there. I don't want them to be extra dudes. So I'm going to set this up. Be like this. Okay. I'm just gonna delete that guy too, because I don't feel like it. Okay, so. So obviously, there's one, two, three, four, four people missing from each side, which means I need this. Which offers three people to each side, and this, which offers two people to each side. And then these guys will help with the missiles. Setting it up a really just carpet bombing, stupid, dumb fire way. But it works. It always works. It just works. And that is what is important. So now, I'm pretty sure everything is peachy, perfect, fine, working on full cylinders. Terror, fancy. This is a fancy version, it does fancy things. Okay, so, Terror, original, on the left, my ships. Terror, where's Terror? Terror, fancy. Terror fancy. Alright. Alright then. Okay. So. So I'm going to auto fire everything on each ship. And that way you can compare how effectively the upkeep works. Once I fix whatever that is. It might have been the case that I only had two crew missing from this, but four on this, so. I'm just going to do that. And the fact that they're immediately going there shows that they were indeed missing four extra crew. Reset this up. Resave the Terror Fancy, because apparently I did it wrong somehow. There we go. Now we're looking nice. Okay, resave it. It works better now. Okay. Pause it. Auto fire. Set two to auto fire as well. And let's just slow it down a little bit. Okay, so all of them are firing their initial volleys because they all have their initial volleys. And you can already see, you can already see here, four of these don't aren't they aren't getting anything they they're fired and they're not getting anything they don't have anything they don't have crew they don't have crew in them whereas these ones as you can see they all have dedicated crew the crew are being very nice the crew are being very helpful and staying where they belong so that's what those four are about it's very it's a clear indicator of some of the differences already present okay let's go a little bit faster Okay, so now we've run out of missiles on both ships, as you can see. Because they're com just completely out of it. Even ammo on the flak has kind of run out a little bit. And what should happen 
is the ship on the left has better upkeep and more missiles because it has a lot of time just put into the crew to do stuff. So let's speed it up to see in the future. And I guess it isn't immediately obvious, or it isn't even like super obvious, but there is more nukes coming out as well as more missiles. And there's also a lot less of those red markings on the left one, which is the fancy one with all the fancy crew and walkways and whatnot, than on this one, which has none of it. It just has dumb, dumb blue crew. They don't do anything. They're, they're all the same. They're boring. They're, they're not even assigned. They're kind of lame. So that is how you might set up crew and have better upkeep, better ship for time. The only trade-off is time, sometimes sanity. But now, you have a better ship. Ship works better. But this is just the first test. Because the next thing to do is test the shields. Because once shield upkeep starts getting involved, it gets... A lot more obvious, I think. So let's stop auto firing. Let's let's stop auto firing. Let's 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 just stop. There we go. Okay. So this guy is gonna face that guy, and that guy is gonna face that guy. Okay. So now I'm gonna fight them, and they're gonna fight. And the terror fancy. In fact, I repainted this a while ago, so I'm just, I'm even going to give it a fancy paint coat. Just so that the difference between them is all the more obvious. Because the fancy one is, well, fancy, and it has a fancy paint coat. So, painted this a while ago. Just going to set it up. There we go. Alright. Now I'm going to save, because if you test ships against each other... You want to save, other, otherwise you have to like replace them every time you want to fight them. Okay, so I'm going to set these two to Barbarian, which means they kill each other. And then, I'm going to... Okay. Right. Okay. It may not actually even show up that the left one has better shield upkeep because they just deal so much damage to each other. Like, look at that. They're already, like, really beating on each other. So, let's just watch for a while. As you can see, some of the shields are already back online. Same with this. But, like this, completely offline. More shields. The reactors are also... The react... I probably need to set it up where these reactors take up more stress. And this can be dedicated to the front shields. Because obviously it's consuming too much energy in the process. So that's something that could be fixed, edited, you know, whatever. Could be made better. So the nukes are flying, they're going off. There's a lot of randomness in this. So, they may be testing. And, you know, crew pathing doesn't always make it that much better. It just makes it a little bit better. For a lot of work. Like the ship on the right, just probably... The ship on the right is backing up. So the test was compromised. We didn't get a good test. Because if you don't Walking up ships are significantly better off than ships that are moving forwards because the backing up ships are running away from projectiles while this one is running into them. Now I set them to Barbarian. Let's slow it down again. Okay, so now since they're not moving, they're just staring at each other menacingly. It should do better. But there's still a lot of randomness. Like, look at the nukes. They're going in different places. If you get lucky, you'd blow up the nuke factories, and then they'd all chain. 
or all explode into one another. Like, see that? It, it lost a rather large section there due to a nuke, and this one didn't. Like, and most of it just lost that stuff, which isn't nearly as important as that. So let's speed it up. A little bit faster. More nukes. Nukes are always fun to watch. See, you can see again that this one got more nuke damage before this one did. Like, it was it had its nuke array blown up before this one did. But then it was immediately repaid. But this one, on average, if you, like, tested these a thousand times, this one would win a lot more often. Because look at the shields. Look at the shields. You see this? The shields are working so much better. So much better. Like, this does have a lot of damage. But three and a half million? Two and a half million. That's a huge damage disposition. And if you were to just test this, like... It... The advantage in this present in this ship would only pronounce itself further. Cause look at this ship. It's it's obvious who the winner is. And if I just tested this constantly for days on end, the crew pathing would only prove itself to be worthy. So yeah, that's that's crew pathing. Um I wanted to make a video about crew pathing. Because there wasn't really anyone else doing it. And it's it was a fun thing to do. I might rebuild the Terror to a more functional ship that doesn't have tractor beams. Because tractor beams don't do anything. At least not in the present update. But that's, that's, that's something else for later. It, it doesn't matter. Whatever. Built the Terror, but better. See, it, it survived with like... Not even a million worth of damage. No, it did with a million worth of damage, but only by a million worth of damage. So obviously, this one is very much better. A lot better, it even looks cooler. Fancy crew, more walkways. Yeah. That's all.